Hello everyone. In this video, we're gonna show you a tutorial on how to use the little applet LP Assistant. Okay, so we'll take the first example we had in class and then we'll go through it and go through all the features of this little applet. You should download it on your computer and um, this is a JavaScript, so once you open it, it will give you this window. So it will have an untitled problem given there, okay? And we see that first thing is um, and get yourself familiar with uh, what is available here. So on the sidebar, you have mode and uh, in the mode, that is the edit mode and the pivot mode. The edit mode is the mode you would use when you are setting up your problem. And once you're done, then you go to the pivot mode and to do the pivoting process. And the second one is the algorithm. You can choose um, two algorithms here. One is the simplex method, and that's the one um, we are first learning. And later on, there will be the dual simplex method. Okay. And this third one is the displayed mode. You can choose to display in fraction, which is the default, and we'll let it be there. And if you prefer, you can choose to display in one decimal point and two or three. And the third one here is ratio. We'll get back to that when we're using it. Okay. And then there are um, buttons here, problem, which allows you to save the problem, open a previously save the problem, print it or quit. And there are useful um, aids you could use and help give you a tutorial. Font and size, you can choose different fonts and then different examples built in there. Okay, so um, let's get started. So to begin with, um, you need to set the problem. So make sure you're in edit mode and then you go into the this button here called tab loop. So remember our problem, we have um, three constraints and five um, variables. Okay, so here I set it up to be. So you can actually go to the tableau, you can add a regular variable if the setting is not exactly matching what you need, and you can add another constraint. And if you do that, then you get an extra line. If you do that, you get an extra column. Okay, so here we have set it and already. Now um, you can go through this table here by and click on it and just type in the number and let's set this up. So I already did the first line to save time. Let's do the second one. Okay, I have zero, one, zero, and I have negative one here and negative five. And on the right hand side, I have 20. And the third line is zero, zero, one. And I have a six here and negative 12 and I get 18, okay? And now um, you need to specify what are the basic variable. So for the first equation, if you click on this X, you can choose and you see that X1 is basic here because it's one here. And for the second line, X2 will be your basic solution. So choose your X2. And then for the third line, you see that X3 is basic so let's choose that okay and once you're done with that and you can go ahead and put in the um, the objective function line so we'll have coefficient negative two here and uh, we'll have three here and uh, what we have here is 60. Okay, so um, that is the initial problem in canonical form. And now we have um, set it up in the LP Assistant. Okay, so um, once that is done, then we can start the pivoting process. Now, before you do anything, so make sure 
in the mode you change from edit to pivot let's do that okay so once you do that and it changes and the, and the display changes a little bit and it gets into this okay so how do we do this so let's look at the coefficients for the objective function and we need to spot if any of this is negative and we see that this is negative if this is negative then we need to look at the coefficient in this column and see if any of them is positive and we see that there are two of them that are positive so these two are both candidate for us to pivot which one should we use well now you want to pay attention to this ratio under this ratio it will be showing the ratio of this number divided by that number okay if you hover over two it says ratio is five and if you hover over six and it says ratio is three so you should mentally remember those two numbers and uh, and figure out which one has the smallest value the positive ones and you see that three is less than five so this six will be the one you want to choose as your pivoting point okay so once you have made that um, conclusion and then go ahead and click on the six so i'm going to click and you see what's happening i click on this ah then you get a longer table so what it does is that once you click it goes through the calculation of the pivoting process in using this as the pivoting point okay it does the calculation exactly as what we did in class and divide this by six and you get that one and then multiply this uh, okay multiply by one add on top and make this zero and then you get this and then multiply by negative two add on top of here and you get this line okay so what's nice about this is also it keeps track of which one are the basic variables so you see that x1 is for this equation x2 for this equation and you have x4 for the third equation this is where you clicked and you made x4 as a basic variable replacing x3 okay and then the objective function here are also pivoted that is all the basic variable will have zero only the non-basic variable a having number okay so it's nice so all you need to do is be the mastermind that is to find out the pivoting point and once that is decided you just click and the applet will do all the calculation for you okay so we will have um one more to click let's make this window a little bit bigger so i can see so I, I just drag and make it a bit bigger okay now is it done well let's look at the coefficient of the c's is there any one negative yes this one's negative now i need to look at this column to see if i have any positive coefficient and i see yes i have one that's three here so if you hover it over three you do get the ratio being shown there but you actually don't need to do anything because that's the only choice you don't have any others so you conclude that's the point you are going to pivot so hover your cursor over that and you click so i'm going to click and you will see what happens okay so after i click the applet calculates carries out the pivoting process and calculates and then give you this table now let's look at it so it makes this one one that means x5 now becomes a basic variable replacing the previous x1 x2 and x4 they are still basic variables they're unchanged but these two equations are being modified such that this becomes zero and this becomes zero okay we know the detail of the pivoting process we went through it in in the previous videos in class and then it calculates also the objective function so we'll get 
x1 and x3, the two non-basic variables, will be num0 here, or the basic ones will be 0. Okay, so at this step, we will need to decide, can we terminate the computation, or do we need to go further? So how do we do it? Well, we need to look at the coefficients here and here, those two that are non-zero. Are they negative? Do we see any negative ones? No, they are both positive. So we can use theorem um, O, the theorem for uh, optimal found one, and we can conclude that now we stop because this one will be the minimum. The minimum value will be the negative of what's showing here for the objective function, and the, the basic feasible solution will be x5 is 4 over 3, x2, 97 over 3, x4, 17 over 3, and then, then you have x1 and x3 are non-basic, they will take the value 0. Okay? Then you terminate. So this is a, a to show you on, on the steps that it takes. So you you need to know where to click. Okay. Once you know where to click, you click, and the pivoting process is calculated automatically for you. Okay. So once you have done that, um, you probably would like to save it. So you can go to problem and you can use this as save as. Okay. And uh, you choose it a name, whatever you want to call. You can say um, LP problem one or for homework and whatever, and you choose a location. Let's say you choose it in your document and you have a folder for your course, whatever. Let's say we save it there and you click save and it will be there. And next time, if you want to make modifications, you can open it and work on it. Okay. And then very often in your homework, I would uh, ask you to turn in the output of your LP assistant. Then you can go there and do the print problem one. Okay, so you can click on that and uh, you can choose the setting. I usually just leave the standard setting, the default, and I say, okay, now here's a little trick. You can go to PDF and you can save as PDF if you choose that and then it pops up a window of where you want to save it you can give it a name whatever you want to call and then save it as a PDF and you can turn that in in your homework okay and okay I am not going to save it and this is just to show you how to save it you can do that all right or you can if before you save you can also do open in preview or whatever your PDF viewer on your computer is to look at it first before you save it. Okay. So, okay. So I'm not going to do that and you can figure out here what to do. So I'm going to cancel this. All right. Um, I hope, um, this video explains and, uh, you, um, you should, uh, um, um, just play around with it and test some of the examples we have done in the class videos and to make sure you fully understand how to use this little applet. Okay, and I hope this is useful and um, I'll see you again in the next video.